And uh, hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of Wednesday here on Chrono Speakeasy. I'm Paul, joined with Angela. Hello. Jay. What's up? Will. Howdy doodly. And Rob. Hello. How's everybody doing this week? Awesome. Tired. I agree. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am on vacation for the rest of this week, so I am ecstatic. Yes. Was Lucky this me. was this vacation planned around Fallout, or did it just happen that way? It was planned around Fallout. When they announced <laughs> Fallout 4, I kind of realized I hadn't taken any vacation time yet. Um, or, sorry, when they announced the Pip-Boy edition, um, I hadn't taken any vacation time yet. So I was like, you know what? I don't give a shit. Everyone else takes vacation time to spend their time with their families. I'm an introvert. I got, I'm single. I'm okay. I'm going to take a week. I'm going to take a week to play Fallout 4 because I've been waiting for this game for like six years. So uh, cool. now Amazon has slammed the brakes on my hype train pretty hard by not getting me release day delivery. And I think I have to wait till Thursday. Ooh, that's a bummer. That's lame. But I have the beautiful collector's edition, so I'm stupidly excited to, to play with that. So uh, what are you going to do between now and Thursday? I have Metal Gear Solid Five that's been keeping me pretty entertained. Um, yeah. And I'm probably going to watch a lot of X-Files. That sounds Good like man. a solid time. Yeah. What about yeah. Uh, Star Oh, sorry. Uh, so sure. just staycations are awesome. What about sure. Star Wars Battlefront? Is that is that out this week? It is, but I spent... Basically, the last of my money on Fallout 4, so I will have to wait mm -hmm. for Battlefront. And I played the demo and didn't love it. Um, I haven't really been a fan of, like, the the first-person shooter, like, Call of Duty-style games in a while. I really want – I don't want something that once the next thing comes out, people stop playing. With Fallout games, I can play those for over and over and over again. And I want to do a – um a bear Jew playthrough because there's a melee perk that makes people blow up if you hit them with a baseball bat. So I'm wow. gonna make it. I'm gonna make a character like Donnie Donowitz from Inglorious Bastards and just go around <laughs> eating people with a baseball bat. It sounds well, solid. So his, his nickname is like the Bear Jew or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah Bear Jew. Okay. I'm probably gonna get Battlefront at some point. That's like a fun game. Like me and my friends are huge computer nerds and we just have LAN parties all the time. So that seems like a good LAN party game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And admittedly, yeah. I didn't get pl get to play the story mode. So the story, the campaign mode, might be so fun that it's worth it. But um, I didn't love the multiplayer in the beta, and it wasn't a huge sell for me. Yeah, those the battlefield style games have always been too big for me. I always get like lost and end up just killing no one, and I'm by myself. Like <laughs> I was like, where is everybody? And then they're all in the middle shooting each other through an alley, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. She's just, like, how'd you get upstairs, Rob? I don't know. There was a door, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know where you guys are. I've been running around for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get to the action, you instantly get headshotted, and you're like, I'm bad at games. <laughs> I'd have that problem with, like, Halo and uh, uh, 007 GoldenEye. Because I'd just uh, run around and, like... That's what I... I got stuck just, like, running around in that game a lot. Well, like, people would gang up on me. <laughs> my brother and whatever friends he was playing with would just like all be on the same team against me. Sounds Aww. like just typical typical brother sibling. Little type brother, gameplay. that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, not fair. It's not. <laughs> it's not fair. Wow, Jay, what a way to be born after your brother. I know, They're like, right? here, Jay, you can use this Mad Cat's controller. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should have been the first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I, 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 had a, I, had a, I had a friend who had Sega Genesis growing up and he was like oh you're gonna come over uh, you're gonna play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 I'm like oh it's awesome and like he I thought it was like a like a, like a two person player he's like oh yeah you're Tails and then I realized when I, was, when I wasn't pressing the buttons Tails was just jumping around like an asshole anyway so I was like oh I wasn't really playing in this game you jerk in Sonic That's 2 though don't you actually control Tails if you use the other controller you have no effect over the game but I think you can actually make him jump and stuff in that game I don't think it really mattered. Like it, it like, didn't, but <laughs> I mean, that's like when you're playing Donkey Kong Country two player, and like player one is always Donkey Kong. He never tags you in, so you can get a turn. <laughs> you're just you watching just your character his... piggyback the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. Good so times. you just wait until that character dies, and then you get to have your turn. Yeah. So it's more like cocky Kong. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Battlefront looks a lot of fun, 
but thankfully I'm still like behind a generation as far as gaming goes. So uh, I'm still with my PlayStation three. Yeah. I don't want to upgrade into like persona five or kingdom hearts three comes out or something like that. Yeah. I'm still with my so, Sega Dreamcast, so I still have a Dreamcast well, too. To do. <laughs> you have a PlayStation Two? How about you and Angela? Do, PlayStation have, Two, I, a couple I, years I ago. I have two. I have a two and a three. You have a four. Oh, wait, I have four. I have a four. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited for Kingdom Hearts Three J, and it can't get here soon enough. I don't believe that they're going to get it out this year. Probably not. It's supposed I, to come out what 2016. It should. I mean. They just announced it, but they've been working on it for fucking 30 years. <laughs> I, was gonna yeah, ever. I loved those games, and I like forgot I love them because it's been so long. Well, what's, you didn't what's shitty Rob, is that like, I mean, I'll the play it. first game came out in like 2003, <laughs> then the second one came out in 2006. Three-year gap. Then it was just a bunch of miscellaneous bullshit with the 1.5362 days remix. Hyperbirth <laughs> sleep time. <laughs> uh, this one they, only they, comes out on your smartwatch. <laughs> and they can't release a final mix in the United States. Like, I would buy a final mix that had all the content so far for my PS4 leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3, but they won't release it here. It kills me. It kills me. The funny that. thing, though, about Kingdom that Hearts is. is that we always talk about how like convoluted some comic book continuity is. Trying yeah. to understand the story of Kingdom Hearts is the biggest nightmare imaginable. But there's Sora and the Hatless and uh, <laughs> Donald Duck and the Goofy. So it, 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 uh, Disney Princess. I'm, I mean, I'm in just to run around like Disney worlds. So if if you haven't listened to MC Chris's rant about the differences between Kingdom Hearts three and Resident Evil four, you should go look that up on YouTube because it's hysterical. Um, I think at one point he quotes it as, come play Kingdom Hearts, it's Disney characters falling out of every orifice, um, <laughs> and then just goes on some tangential rampage, and it's great. Well, he had an album called Kingdom Farts. <laughs> like, he was not a fan. He is a true wow. lyricist, that one. But uh, what's <laughs> cool about Kingdom Hearts 3, too, is that they have a Baymax world, which is pretty sweet, which I'll be pretty excited for that, and just... Everything in the trailer that they had at E3 looked amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited for Big Hero 6 World. That sounds pretty sweet. Mm. I always like hear rumors now that like Marvel and Star Wars are part of Disney, and you're like, Kingdom Hearts just gets real silly, and they're just like, oh, hey, screw it. Comic book characters. I would love it, and it would get even so much more confusing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be awesome. Imagine doing a mission with Captain America. It'd be like Goofy, <laughs> going to Goofy and Donald with Sora and like Kyrie and then Captain America. Like the what? <laughs> and the special Keyblade is a version of Mjolnir. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Gorsh, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of oh, want. Oh boy! <laughs> it, uh, speaking of animated voices, what's this? I hear about Mariah Carey being cast in the Lego Batman movie as. Wait for it. Commissioner Gordon. I hope I, it's the white old guy version. <laughs> I, I think so. I I saw a little thing about it, and it did. She wants to do it. I don't know if it's an actual thing. It, it seems weird. I, I just, don't know how she's gonna pull off a dude voice. I mean, is Gordon gonna? You know what? Actually, if she does it, I hope she doesn't do a dude voice. I just hope it's fucking Commissioner Gordon's Lego face with Mariah Carey's voice and singing "All I Want for Christmas Is You." Like, well, I just saw like the headline. It, it didn't even say Mariah Carey. It was just like casting for Lego Batman and it was just a picture of Mariah Carey and I was <laughs> so confused <laughs> I didn't read it I was just like I wonder if that thumbnail like was improperly selected oh that, that was that, the uh, that was the io9 article right so it was probably you who posted it or yeah, I think it will was or me. someone but yeah I hate when 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 uh, when, when, uh, when websites do that it's like clickbait it's like well we have some breaking news about the Batman vs Superman movie and you click on it, Zack Snyder farted. It's like, that does nothing. That didn't really... But, uh, but you clicked it, gotta so get you pay their... Views. Yeah, you pay their advertiser, like, one cent. Barely. So you are didn't the even disease. click on an ad. <laughs> Can't we click people, clickbait people for chronospeakeasy.com? I'm bad at writing stuff, but I can I can get thumbnails that people will want to click. Just have fake porn, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, Mariah Carey. I assume I assume they're just going to have a female Commissioner Gordon. I assume. But I would like to think she's just going to do I, her I best really gruff man do. voice. That'd be awesome it, cuz it's like the there's a ton of female voice actors that do guy voices. Sure, it's mostly for kids, but none of them are Mariah Carey though. <laughs> You never know. She's got a huge range. Like, she can hit notes that most people can't hit. So she can probably go low That's and true. do a man voice. Think about I, it. I, I don't, no, I don't want to think about it. That No. I like Gary Mariah Carey. Oldman, Gary Oldman's pretty much the quintessential Commissioner Gordon for me. He really he, is. Yeah, he did nail it pretty good. It's Gary Oldman. I mean, yeah. He's, he's wonderful in everything. Mariah Carey can't top that. Mariah Carey was wonderful and everything until the year 2000. Until she got fucking crazy. Yeah. Because, oh man, when she was Girl Next Door, Mariah, I was in a fantasy all day. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, okay, I know this is weird, but you know what, like, turned me off to Mariah Carey was this episode of MTV Cribs. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Where it wasn't actually her home, it was like a hotel. It was when she got into the bathtub midway through. No, it was when, the fact that she what when she walked, she walked on her toes, like on the balls of her feet, and she wouldn't put her ankles. She was barefoot, and she just wouldn't let like the back of her foot touch the ground. And I, I and she just walked like that, and I just thought that was the weirdest thing because that's what like six year old girls do when they're trying to be taller. <laughs> and watching this grown woman do that was really unnerving. And I, I was watching it, and I just remember thinking. Whoa, this bitch is fucking crazy. <laughs> Speaking of Commissioner Gordon, though, the other day <laughs> I was on Amazon Instant Video and I saw that all of the Batman animated series is on there. And yes. I, don't, I don't know how long that's been there, but good God, am I happy that I stumbled across that. Can, long can, time. Can we do like a tribute video to like the Batman animated series with us all we talk about mm. for an hour? I'm down because... God damn, it's so good. It I've only watched a couple episodes. I watch Heart of Ice like I feel like once a week now because that <laughs> that episode is just so freaking good. But it, is. it really is. It is. And actually, I was talking to Mark today about um, Mark started reading Zero Year, and mm -hmm. we were talking about the Snyder run on Batman, which, as you all know, I'm a huge fan of. But we were kind of commiserating on the fact that we kind of hated what they did to the whole Victor Freeze storyline, and it's like, why do you need to rework that? Like the Paul Dini. You know, a storyline that he wrote for Mr. Freeze is perfect. Like, it doesn't need to be touched up, reworked. Like, that story fits any decade, any time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not like... It's, it's the quintessential, like, Mr. Freeze. Like, I... Oh, it's perfect. That episode is so good. The end of that episode is so sad. Yeah. I mean, no, it's you great. You feel it's, for him so much. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know what, what always got me was, like, I, I when I was a kid, I liked how the Batman episodes kind of ended on a downer. Like, what was the episode, uh, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? It was the debut of the Riddler and Batman didn't catch him. And like, mm -hmm. the guy that the Riddler kidnapped, it just ends with him with like six like deadbolts on his door and going to bed with a shotgun shaking. <laughs> and that's how it ends. It's like, wow, so Batman didn't win that one. That's nope. sad. Also, it just, it's so pretty. Like, that show yeah. looks so good for an animated show. And like, I miss I, American yeah, cartoons. Especially for the 90s. Yeah. But, like, I miss the American cartoons existing and looking great. <laughs> the animation in that has aged incredibly well because mm -hmm. I recently rewatched X Men and, whew, that has not aged well. Will? So, uh, the Batman animated series was actually revolutionary in a way because they were the first cartoon where they decided to use black background paper instead of mm -hmm. white background paper so that they yeah. could really get that dark tone that they wanted. So that's why it works so well and why it is so dark is because there literally wasn't white unless they drew it on. Also, I'm just a huge sucker yeah. for that, like, Art Deco, blimp-filled Gotham. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, like, what's cool with that, it's like art, it, it, it's almost as if, like, the World's Fair in, like, in 1935, like, if exactly. that future had happened. Yeah, they, they have like, all a this city. Technology. Like, they, was, they have, like, planes with, like, TV monitors, but the TV monitors are, like, black and white. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's big it's CRT advanced, looking but it's not thing. too advanced. Like, no, it was great. It was awesome. Um, I would love to see a live-action Batman movie like that that'd be really cool yeah jay 
So, who are you guys' favorite villains from the cartoon series? Oh. Whenever, whenever Harley and Poison Ivy teamed up, those were always my favorite episodes, hands down. Um, yeah. I I loved I loved those episodes. I also liked um, the really odd, like the the random villains that they just like made up, like Baby Doll, mm-hmm. that were just so tortured and like broken, and you couldn't help but feel bad for them. Yeah, the show did a such a good job with the villains. Like it's just so good. Riddler was definitely always my favorite. He still is, and and I feel like nothing has really come close to capturing the same uh, energy as he had in those show in that show back then. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I liked about that Riddler is that he wasn't like cuckoo ha ha crazy. Like he, he he, I mean, his biggest thing is like his ego. Like mm-hmm. he like he like he wants you to know that he's the smartest dude on the streets, if not the world you know and it's like that's why he leaves his clues because he wants you to know it was him mm-hmm. um, and I think in like the Jim Carrey Riddler like I get that was a nod to the 60s Riddler but I would love to see like a Riddler where he's just like calm cool collected and calculating I feel like a lot of seats I feel like they have to bring the Riddler in to one of the f- next few Batman movies just because out of like if you ask a random person on the street who isn't like a huge nerd it's just like name a Batman villain probably gonna say Joker Catwoman, and then the Riddler's got to be like top three that people know. Even if it's just probably even Scarecrow if it is, too. Maybe now because of the new Batman movies, but like right. just Jim Carrey and then the old, just dude with a question mark on his hat. <laughs> yeah, the question mark. I mean, I mean, the symbol stands out. I think it um, definitely leaves an, an impression. And he works yeah, on the Scarecrow. I like the Scarecrow a lot too. Who's your favorite animated series villain? He was pretty good, yeah. He, he was really creepy looking in the show, too. He was too. so good. Cre- well, in the spiders, when he'd make people see, like, spiders crawling over them, that was, like, yeah. that's that's horrifying. You know what was a great episode, though? I'm not a big Mad Hatter villain, but the one where the Mad Hatter makes a virtual reality world for Bruce Wayne where everything's perfect, like, his parents yeah. are alive, and, like, he's married to Selena Kyle, and when he figures out it's all a sham, the only way to escape was suicide. <laughs> He like threw himself off a church tower to escape. Saturday morning cartoon. I was like, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always man. thought Clayface was really cool and creepy. Yeah, how he could just shape shift into different people and stuff like I that. I felt for him too, especially when they had yeah. his origin episode and like the pressures of being a celebrity. It just it really, oh, I felt bad for him. I felt bad for all the villains except for the Joker. I'm going to give you a tip because I also love the Clayface stuff, but don't try and go to read up on Clayface because I've tried to do it. And apparently there's been like 12 of them and I don't understand what happened. Yeah, it's Clayface. Clayface in the comics is is mushy, to say the least. No pun intended. Like it's (laughs) like like that backstory is just. Yeah, because like like Will said, there's been like nine different Clayfaces and it's like, why? Well, like. So we killed that guy, but we, I hate when they do that in comics. Like we killed this guy, but we like the villain. It's like hobgoblins. Like, well, Green Goblin's gone. Let's bring back a goblin who's orange. Oh, that works. Hobgoblin looked cool though. I was like you the know, orange I, goblin look. <laughs> no, but but you know what I mean. But though, I know what you're like, saying. Yeah, he's no yeah. Green Goblin. The the Harry or, Harry Osborn Hobgoblin is a good story arc, but wasn't it originally just like some random guy who stumbled across? Uh, one of the old labs probably I think so yeah well there was multiple green goblins like the Osborne family but um <laughs> that dog just ran over Sorry. you guys <laughs> oh, I just got mugged by a puppy it was really <laughs> intense I'm sorry, Rob. What were you saying? I forgot something about <laughs> hobgoblin, but that's fine. <laughs> hobgoblin story stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, you posted earlier the picture of uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange that mm-hmm. came out this week. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I, I, I like, I mean, granted, it's only been a few photos, but I really like what I see so far. And it, and it looks like it's definitely sticking to uh, it being an origin story. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah, he's got that, like, aged look to him. Yep. Like, he's and seen I, some shit. <laughs> and like the gray hair on the side of his head was a nice touch and I like also too that we get we actually get a look at the villain as well um, Baron Mordo mm-hmm. um, sweet I, yeah so that was really cool I'm, I'm excited that's that's Chiwetel uh, 
Ao four, right? Geo four or yeah, Geo four. Um, he looked great. I'm really excited. Baron Mordo is kind of one of those people that I was bummed we didn't get to with the Hydra stuff. So I'm wondering if that's gonna tie back at all. Oh, maybe. I would not be surprised. I mean, Hydra was kind of a big part of Phase Two. So if they, yeah. I like that phase two. I mean, sorry. Um, excuse me. Let, me. let me rephrase it. I was happy to see that Hydra was still involved in phase two post Winter Soldier. Like, how what was it like the um, Hydra was trying to get the Ant Man technology? Or yeah, mm-hmm. and then just all of Shield too. Yeah, uh, that's reminds me of that. Did any else, any of you else, read Iron Man three or the Invincible Iron Man three or whatever? It had mm-hmm. that that one page where he's about to kiss the girl, and he's just like, "Hail Hydra!" And she's like, "What?" And he's like, "Not nah, just checking." <laughs> <laughs> that was he's a like, great meme that came out from Winter Soldier. Oh, I know all the pictures of people just going, "Hail Hydra!" Yeah. Can, can I just say real quick? Uh, no, the Cumberbatch <laughs> has this pretty solid beard. Yep, that What's was up? the first thing I noticed. Like What's he, up? his beard, it's mm-hmm. a pretty good beard. I, I didn't think he was like. Not British enough to grow a beard. <laughs> I think the beard's fake. That's the that's uh that's my that's my oh, guess. That's your theory. He's a pretty good actor. He could probably grow that beard. <laughs> yeah, he probably could. He could probably well, grow it different colors, different styles. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the 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 fact that it's it, it's got like the gray and the brown like right in the center, like like Doctor Strange has it. So maybe they had him grow it and then they dyed it. They probably did that. Maybe. But- I'm it, just looks, happy it, looks, it looks shaggy like, enough to be real. Thing. I am just happy it looks better than the Christian Bale shitty goatee in Dark Knight Rises that was clearly fake. And it's like, dude, you're fucking Chris Nolan. You you maybe convince about dreams within dreams. Convince he can grow a fucking goatee. The thing is, I don't even know if that was fake or if Christian Bale just grows really terrible facial hair. Because I've seen people who try to grow facial hair and they, I'm like, you should probably shave. This wasn't. Meant, this was not meant for you. He's not really good at growing facial hair from any movie I've seen him with facial hair, and unless it's just always fake. Yeah. Well, I've seen I've seen pictures of him with an actual like real life beard that looks more realistic, more realistic than the one he had in Dark Knight Rises. But it does look like the type of beard that would look that terrible as a goatee. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I know personally, I couldn't grow 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 a goatee. <laughs> Like, it just doesn't grow there. I just have patches, look terrible. And if I was stuck in a cave for who knows how long, I might look like that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be able my to build an Iron Man? Don't connect. Well, Tony Stark built his in a cave, so. <laughs> With a box of scraps. Grow a beard yes. in a cave. I could grow a beard in a cave, at least. I couldn't That'd build That would be great Man. if Rob made, like, a metal beard. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's iron beard, like, with, like, an arc reactor, like, right in the nipple, like... That's that's the next villain in the Iron Man movie. <laughs> like, a little jetpack comes out and he just flies by his face. <laughs> <laughs> Those shtick endorsements are getting real. Oh god, oh, that'd be awesome. Rock is like, and it like comes out like, just fly. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> oh god, I should have built a neck brace. It's <laughs> like wings come out. And- I wouldn't uh, be surprised though, because all the Iron Man villains are always just Iron Man, but bigger or different or shinier. Yeah. So it's just like a strictly worse Iron Man villain. I think that's why it's good that we we don't have any more Iron Man movies coming out. Just put Tony Stark in other people's movies, like in the comics, and it works. Like mm-hmm. having him in Avengers and Captain America. Hell, put him in Guardians of the Galaxy; it'll work. I mean, they did that in the comics, and it mm-hmm. eh, didn't work that well. <laughs> And they had that beautiful Starburst armor in Iron Man 3 that never got any footage. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. That's too bad. I wish Oops. I was like a a craftsman so I could work on a movie like Iron Man and just build those suits. Because that yeah. seems like the coolest job ever. I know. Mm. I would like do like so many favors for my friends, like for cosplaying and stuff like that, and kids' birthdays. It would be amazing. But, it's but like, I do um, want to say the. Oops, sorry. I was just going to say, like, on that topic, I know, Will, you were talking about trying to, like, make props and stuff like that. Do you ever watch uh, what Adam Savage does? All the time. That's probably one of the big things that got me into it um, or really drove me to want to do it. Um, His video on his Hellboy glove is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love kind of, like, and it actually, I would say, because, 
one of the big things that's kept me away from like cosplay and stuff like that is my attention to detail. Like if I'm going to do something like that, I got to I, I, I feel like I have to do it mm-hmm. or like to to an extreme degree. But then I look at like the video that he did with Alton Brown, where they went out in Comic-Con as the twins from the Matrix and like how shoddily they put that together <laughs> and and yet had. And yet we're completely okay with it. And like, and then I look at Adam Savage as one of the most detail oriented people on the planet when it comes to prop making. And it's, it's opening my eyes a lot. And I just wish I had the space to have the tools to do stuff like that. I know. I always wish I had the tools and the skill. Cause that seems like the coolest hobby to have. I just want someone to make me a Captain America helmet. I got the shield. I just need a helmet and well, that maybe 120 pounds of muscle and then I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> which which helmet do you want like the one with the wings or do you want like the something more like chris evans Maybe like, like the, the wartime war- i like the war t- i like the one with like the leather strap mm-hmm. i didn't like i i don't like the avengers helmet i either either cat's america first avenger or uh winter soldier mm-hmm. i feel like it, it's i mean i'm not good with leather but it it seems doable yeah i couldn't I, do it i'm sure someone could <laughs> i mean i'm Give not me- a- I'm really not motivated when it comes to cosplays. I, I straight up just look at stuff and I'm like, eh, this seems like it'll work. Throw it together and then try a day of. <laughs> I can bake it. I can bake shit like really good. <laughs> but I'm not going to actually like mold anything or like oh. pour like plaster or work with leather. No, oh, yeah. I'll get some oh, cheap, yeah. some cheap fabric, stuff it, make it look shiny. And just like <laughs> from far away, it looks like, you know, it's my, not that. <laughs> my dream first cosplay is to do the heavy from Team Fortress 2 and build oh, like shit. a Sasha and build a Sasha. And like Damn. I've seen a couple like videos where people do it out of a lot of PVC pipe and like a barrel. Mm-hmm. And it seems yeah. pretty doable. It would just take effort. It also wouldn't be too heavy if you use PVC. My friend mm-hmm. was actually a scout one year for Halloween. Which is the easiest costume? <laughs> Just run around with a baseball bat, yelling with a shitty Boston accent. <laughs> well, there's always a lot of like uh, the um, spy guy or whatever from mm-hmm. TF2. Mm-hmm. They always just have that uh, paper mask on the front of them. Yeah, it's just them in a suit with the paper mask. I want to do Star Wars. I either want to be if I if I had the means. I would either be a stormtrooper or Boba Fett. I know, I know not terribly original, but man, I would love to have my own Boba Fett gear. That'd be rad as shit. If you want to talk about people who are detail oriented, people who dress up like Star Wars characters, in particularly the stormtrooper outfits, those things are fucking crazy. They're like they're so good. They're so well, look good. At the people from Comic Con that we did the interview with that we messed with them with. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Soon enough, you'll probably for like the the. Stormtrooper and like Boba Fett outfits, you're gonna be able to get like 3D printed, really good replica versions of those pretty soon. I think. Um, I just want to do a couple throws for anyone who's more interested in this. Uh, so definitely check out Adam Savage's tested channel because they do so much there and model making and all that jazz. Um, but then the RPF, the Repl- replica prop forum, is like it's where everyone who's trying to make like either anything from fun stuff to um, like really screen accurate props and they go there and they talk about it. There's like an 80, no, it's hundreds of pages for the Han Solo DL44 blaster. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. They, they get everything right. They've specked out all the pieces. It's ridiculous. We'll just turn into like a glowing star of excitement. <laughs> I, I love so, because I love props and I love that aesthetic of the movie, it's one of the parts that I always really love, and I always fall in love with something from a movie of some prop or some uh, set. And it, it's just a, it's just fun to be able to try to do the puzzle making of what model pieces did they use, and it's a whole challenge right. within a challenge before you even start building it, which is fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. That is no, it's really cool. I give it those guys a lot of credit. But yeah, this. I mean, this podcast has basically become like gushing over Star Wars the past couple months with all this new stuff coming out. But can we, we can't help it. Can we talk okay. about how good that new Japanese trailer was? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Better, it was better than the U.S. trailer. BB-8. Yeah, everything's better in Japan. BB-8 stole the show. You hear yeah, his, you yeah. hear his noises, and I'm like, that's a good sounding droid. <laughs> I actually read it somewhere today that that BB-8 is a female droid. Hmm. 
they have also, genders. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, C three PO. Why not? C three PO is in this trailer too, briefly. That made me happy. With the red arm. Yeah, I don't. Was he the didn't arm have it? the red arm? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Which I think that they revealed in one of the comics, right? Yes, actually. Yeah. I think. And then you. And then so I don't know why my favorite shot of the Japanese trailer was this, but just that one scene of Chewie clicking whatever the fuck he's clicking, and then a giant <laughs> explosion put the biggest smile on my face. Just, oh, it yeah. all looks so pretty. Like I don't know if they're on Endor, but there's some like foresty planet that looked awesome. Just the desert planet with the sunset, and I'm just like, oh man, I love it. I'm so yeah. excited. I'm so. F- freaking excited <laughs> we, we, we saw us uh, yeah we saw specter uh in imax and we saw that second trailer on the yep. imax screen dude good. i had goosebumps on my eyeballs it was insane like just how <laughs> like just the uh, like it was like oh that oh that trailer looks good that, that looks good then it, then the star wars trailer came on and it was like i don't know man it, it like something happened to my body it's crazy because, like, like, I had the it, biggest, dumbest smile on my face when I saw that in the theaters, too. And it's it's crazy because I don't even consider myself, like, a crazy Star Wars fan. But, like, with all this lead-up and this hype and people are, like, talking to me about it and I know all these dumb little details about Star Wars, I'm like, it seeps so deep into, like, 50 years of our culture that it's yeah. just, goddamn, this shit better it, be good. <laughs> it, it's called a nerdgasm. And mm-hmm. welcome yes. to the club of having them because they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, I it's funny. Like, I want to see it opening weekend, but I feel like I probably shouldn't because, like, even if I buy my tickets ahead of time, provided there are still tickets to be had, like, I feel like there's gonna be like like a line like hours before like, beforehand. Like, I'm thinking I might go like early morning on Monday after the opening weekend. That's actually know. exactly what I'm planning to do. Although. I do love seeing movies like opening night at midnight just because the crowds are always like so respectful because they're all there to just see the movie. Like I remember when I saw either Dark Knight or Avengers at midnight, it was like everybody was talking and laughing and the second the movie started, it just became silent. Yeah. And it was just like, oh man. It's a there good is feeling. a part of me, there's a big part of me that misses midnight showing sex. I went to the midnight showings of like like all the Iron Man movies, mm-hmm. like uh, Thor, um, yeah, like it's it's great because like you can just like you can just feel the excitement in the room. Do you remember going to the midnight showing of X Men Three? Because that was, I think we went to that together, if I remember right, and it was hilarious but terrible because that movie was painful, and I regretted seeing the midnight showing, but it was still funny. Yep. I remember that, and I also remember seeing the midnight showing of Spider-Man 3, and that was, like, the most depressing cab ride home. <laughs> like, I was like, actually, I'm sorry, don't drive my fear. Can you drop me off here over at this cliff so I can throw myself from it? Thanks. Here's a 20. <laughs> don't see a Spider-Man 3. I just miss being able to stay up till midnight. Yeah. It's Yeah. It's sad. I'm, it's hard. I have to wake up at 4.30 tomorrow. I can't be I'm just staying old. up till midnight. <laughs> I'm just I, old. I like to get up early and get stuff done. I have no problem staying up till midnight. I'm such a night owl. It's like no problem. I used to be like that. I literally, I remember I saw the Hulk movie with Edward Norton. I saw a 1.30 a.m. showing. Like for some reason they Jesus had that. Jesus Christ, Rob. That, okay, now you're talking lunacy. A 1.30 like, <laughs> a.m. showing. Although that movie I started to fall asleep because it was... Eh. It's not my favorite yeah. of the Marvel movies. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I was reading today that, so they're pegging the um, Star Wars opening weekend to be somewhere around 225 million, which is 40 million more than Age of Ultron. Um, and they're saying that there are some theaters that are literally, it, whenever you want to go see it from Friday at midnight to like Monday, some theaters are just playing it 24 hours a day. That's how many tickets they're selling. And it's Damn. just constant. It's constant. It makes sense though. I mean, if you think about it, you only need like three people on staff at that point and you're just raking in money. <laughs> yeah. Jay. I mean, I already like after the first trailer came out, I bought four tickets right away and the only way I could get like somewhat decent seats for the movie was like to go at ten fifteen at night, 
like that's when I could book my like the showing or whatever because there are reserved seats too at the Braintree Theater. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you go to the one that has but, the uh, recliners? Oh yeah, the AMC. Oh, yeah. That's a good theater. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to be lazy, but I like got the center row area, so I'll just be able to just really see. enjoy the movie. But um, cool. <clears throat> every other time was just like sold out for the most part, and then I find out that like the sites were crashing and stuff like that mm-hmm. pretty soon yeah. after. I mean, I, I just, can understand like if you wanted to see it at midnight at like an IMAX. I mean, I know in Massachusetts we have like three or four like actual IMAX theaters, and then mm-hmm. there's a bunch of those fake shitty IMAX ones. But I know I looked up the Reading Theater for anybody who's interested. At Jordan's Furniture is the only true, hundred percent true, still projects with IMAX film theater in Massachusetts. Um, N- Natick doesn't do it. Natick has the screen size but they do digital IMAX projection which still looks great but it's not the true film nerd experience <laughs> so long as it's a screen that's bigger than my house I don't really care yeah. well we discovered um, the IMAX theater here in Denver I still couldn't really tell you where it is because we're still kind of getting a feel lay of the land definitely in Colorado but <laughs> But I and it's it was because I was thinking it was going to be like a fake IMAX like it is like in Boston because have so many fake IMAXs will charge you an arm and a leg, but it's not arm <laughs> IMAX. And um, we I was like not feeling good when we saw Spectre. So I was just like, oh, I'm a little nauseous. So hopefully we get good seats like kind of away from the screen that I went in. It was like the super like stadium where yeah. it's like. Where you're like on top of the person in front of you, or you could like easily just fall over <laughs> and yeah. die. And it was just like, oh man. And we were like, it was so packed and we were really close to the screen. I was like, okay, I just don't want to throw up. <laughs> yeah, that 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 theater was intense because the screen was fucking huge. I was like, well, this trumps anything I've seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, I love that real IMAX. It's just, there's nothing like it. How was Spectre? Uh, uh, so, so <laughs> Rob, you seen it, right? Yeah, I saw it yesterday. Okay, so we'll I'll I'll try to we'll try to do like a spoiler free review. Rob, do you want to begin or shall I? Sure. And, and I'm not the biggest fan of Bond to begin with, so you'll have to to sell me on it. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's the second worst of the James of uh, the Craig ones. Like, I think Quantum of Solace is worse. Um, because it just it felt weird because it was primarily like the serious Daniel Craig feeling Bond but then there was this they would throw it back to like the hokey campy like old school Bond movies but it would just randomly throw those moments in so it'd go from like the serious fight and then all of a sudden it would just be like a joke or he'd just start like he'd like look at the girl and they'd just be like start making out instantly and it was just like it was kind of jarring. Also, this one wasn't shot by Roger Deakins, so it wasn't nearly as pretty as Skyfall was. Because Skyfall was a pretty goddamn movie. It really yeah. was. Um, I didn't see it. You should. Skyfall's real good. <laughs> Wait, is that the first one or the second one? The third, third one. one with Daniel Craig. I think uh, it's on that Netflix. Is. I thought Spectre was the third one. No, no it's fourth. The fourth. There's Casino Oopsie. Royale, Quantum, Quantum of Solace, Solace, Skyfall. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I only saw the first one. But I mean, I, o- overall, I mean, I had a good time watching it. It was still fun. Like, if you just like James Bond type movies, I would still see it. I don't think it was a bad movie. I just think after seeing Skyfall, it was not nearly on the level of Skyfall. That was something I was thinking about going in because I, I had read some reviews, and the reviews were that I found were incredibly mixed about uh, Spectre. Mm-hmm. And I thought that part of the problem was, and this is previewing that what was going against this movie was that it came after Skyfall. I feel like any other Bond movie fo- following this one would have been, would have been under intense scrutiny. So I try to keep that in mind when I when I when I watched it. And I think the thing that kind of bothered me about this Bond film is that I feel like in Casino Royale uh, that film was like a mission statement that this is a different Bond, it's gritty, it's real, he is a blunt instrument mm-hmm. um you know and who was also could be wounded and he had a past that stuck with him. Um, and 
and I bought it. I mean, I totally dug Casino Royale, and I like how the repercussions of Casino Royale were felt in Quantum and Skyfall. So to go from the serious tone to what you said, Rower, serious tone followed by, I don't know, like these weird jarring moments where it was like trying to harken back to like Roger Moore Bond, and it's like yeah. you don't you don't you don't need it. Be your own Bond. You've been your own Bond. It's really not necessary. And uh, I was really severely disappointed uh, by Blofeld. Is that like, so, um, what's uh, his name? Christ- Christoph Waltz. Christoph yes. Waltz. First of all, he, Christoph Waltz is, is a gem. He's yeah. such a fantastic, talented actor, and he was wasted in this movie. I'm not saying he was drunk. I mean, they, like, wasted his potential. Like, I mean, I, I don't know, Rob. I don't know if you felt that way about, like, they, and I hated how they were trying to be like, oh, he's been behind this from the first film, but it really felt like it was, it felt like very, more of, very like, an shoehorned in there. Yeah. The thing yeah, with him, total I liked him up until they got to the point, like at the end of the movie, kind of the wrap up. But like when you initially see him and they're in that like secret society type thing, I thought that setting was really cool because everybody just like shut up when he walked into the room. He was all in oh, silhouette yeah. and he felt like a huge like force of nature almost. And then at the end when he's just like, doy dee doy dee doy, I have a weird suit that only buttons up top. I'm just like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't no, I thought I thought that scene, the secret meeting scene, was really it was a lot like Eyes Wide Shut. I like and Eyes Wide Shut. <laughs> did you really? I love everything Kubrick <laughs> has ever done. His face. Oh God, no! I could that could be its own podcast. As Angela talks about what the fuck was wrong with Eyes Wide Shut, but um, no, I liked okay the, for the opening sequence. The opening sequence was stellar, and I think for me the Bond opening sequences really kind of that dictates my mood throughout the rest of the film Mm -hmm. because I'm going to be real with you. I'm not a Bond fan, but for some reason growing up, every single man in my life is a massive James Bond fan. So I've like sat through all of the movies multiple times and I just have like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I won't go out of my way to watch one, but I know way too fucking much about them. And so the the opening sequence really did kind of make me gush a little bit. I didn't like the song, but the visuals were just beautiful. And um, yeah, I just I, I'm, I'm kind of with Paul on how certain moments just got really like hokey and were too much of like a throwback yeah. to like. how dopey the Roger Moore stuff would be. And even like some of the Sean Connery stuff, yeah. it was just very like, like that girl, one of the things, and this is a huge spoiler, but one of the things she's like, I'm, if you ever try to touch me, I'm going to kill you. And then like 10 minutes later, they're like on a train and they're like, what do you want to do next? Ugh. You know, yeah, that's they're what all I was just over talking each about. other. And it's just like, wait, what happened to that? Like there. And honestly, I needed way, way, way more Monica Bellucci. Cause let me tell you mm-hmm. something about that woman. Like, if she could just like narrate what I was doing in that like panty voice, I would like where she's just panting and just like, oh, and now you're brushing your teeth. I would just like, I would just melt. I'd just be a puddle of butter. Like she is a wonderful woman and she is so beautiful. And I could have just had like, a half hour more screen time with and her. People, people were giving shit because it, it's Monica Bellucci. She's still amazing, but they people were saying that she's too old to be a Bond girl. I'm like, what the fuck is that shit? I mean, technically no, she wasn't the so Bond because... girl, but still, I agree. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> a Bond girl. Well, you know what bothers me in, in that statement is, look at Roger Moore. He was in his, like, late 50s. Like, in A View to a Kill, he's he's older than the mother of the bond girl he's sleeping with like so we can have a super old bond but we can have like an older monica bellucci and or an older bond girl and let's be real monica bellucci at her age fucking smoking she's not even I, old <laughs> I, do you know how many virgins blood i would have to bathe in just to have like a sliver of what she has like she that that she did dark magic to attain that level of just beauty like she has probably like eaten unborn children to maintain that level of just grace and awe. Oh, she's so hot. Here's my like <laughs> mo- here's 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 my Monica Bellucci story. Okay, 
she was in the Passion of the Christ as fucking Mary Magdalene, and I was like, wow, I should not be having these feelings for Mary Magdalene. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, she can wash my feet any day. <laughs> or wash her feet. Whatever the fucking happened. It was awesome. Like, wash some stuff with Monica Bellucci. Yeah. But she, like, you know, and when people, whenever I hear that argument, when there's a beautiful woman and there's some guy being like, she's too old. All it just makes me realize is like, wow, man, you just outed yourself as a fucking creep. <laughs> and you're only into like young flesh and that's like really gross and you're gross and so whenever people bit like whenever dudes in particular bitch about like women being too old i'm like oh i'm not i just don't come near me don't she's come 50 near me. Uh, i'm looking at <laughs> pictures of her right now she's pretty hot <laughs> yeah um one thing i, I, I do want to say too uh in because uh, I want to give credit where credit's due and again going back to my earlier statement about judging a film by its own merits i do want to give a shout out to uh, what was it, David Batista? David Batista. Yeah, he was great in this man. Like he, he's period. like he was. I found him. Bear in mind to set the scene. Uh, you know, I'm only 127 pounds, but like when I saw this guy on screen, I was like, holy shit, he's intimidating. Yeah, and like in, in his three piece suit, I was like, wow, this dude is not fucking around. Like I don't know he, what happens to my Drax the Destroyer, but holy, he is a he is a presence. Like when that dude walked in, I was like, well. That's a big dude. <laughs> I, mean, I uh, just want. I'm sorry. I just want to run through Dave Bautista's credits really quickly because it's kind of amazing at how well he's done. So he went from being a thug in the newest um, Pitch Black movie with Vin Diesel, Riddick movie, the Riddick movie. Yeah, that's right. Um, so he went from a thug there where he was okay to being Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy, one of the Not biggest true. breakaway movies. No, what? What you're, was he? You're missing one. Uh, he was in. Um... Uh, man with the iron fists with the RZA. Oh, oh. He, was, he was brass body. That's how he got his like Holy MMA shit. nickname. Okay. He actually did uh, an MMA match that was in uh, the Twin Rivers Casino <laughs> at uh, I think Bellator or something like that <laughs> See, or CES. And, he, and here I thought he was in the Sisterhood of, of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> Good event. <laughs> Stop. But yeah, but now he's in Bond. Like, and and I don't know if you guys have seen the Comic Con clip where they announce him as, uh, or the first Comic Con after they announced Guardians. But he was like just such an honest person up on stage where he talked about the opportunity that he got and how much fun he was having and learning and enjoying that you can't not love him. And just to see him getting up to this level where now he's a presence in the Bond movies is, I mean, good for the guy. Yeah. I, He's just great, and I'm so happy for him. He was also yeah. just a WWE wrestler before all this, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was... First film credit. He was great, and he was sort of like... And get back to what I think what Rob was saying about how this kind of... This movie harkens back to the older Bond movies. He was sort of like the odd job of this movie. Like, yeah. That he was kind of like the, like, like the thug for, the, for the, uh, the villain. I liked his weird, like... Silver like spiked thumbs. Yeah, his, his <laughs> thumbs for the nails for the only purpose of pulling people's eyeballs out. Okay, yeah. so uh, apparently, Batista was in an episode of Smallville uh, as Aldar at some point, which is kind of funny, and in just like one random episode. Then it's just a bunch of wrestling stuff, and yeah. I was hoping he'd be like he was in an episode of the Gilmore Girls. Yeah, he played Rory's uh, classmate. He was in the third <laughs> Scorpion King, and then Man with the Iron Fist in like 2012. But he's done. Did you say the third Scorpion King? Oh yeah, yeah there's three thing, of them. Apparently, I saw the first one in theaters. It's not yeah. that bad. I mean, the opening sequence of the Scorpion King is a pretty cool opening sequence. It was pretty cool with the like. I want to see it primarily because it was just like. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I was just like, "Holy shit, the Rock's gonna do something! <laughs> this is awesome." Yeah. That's back when he I had a human the body. Rock. I, just, I knew I love the Rock more every year. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I follow him on His Instagram. Super great. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, I, I I I I knew a girl who thought Vin Diesel and the Rock were the same person. She thought he was Vin the Rock Diesel, and it's like, no, those are yeah, two I, different I saw people. One that uh, it was the Rock from wrestling, and then like. Dwayne Johnson. It was just like, is it just me or does Dwayne Johnson look a lot like The Rock? What's up <laughs> with this, guys? 
Did you guys see that that he became an ordained minister to marry uh, uh, some like website reporter that he had befriended? Yeah. Like he actually went through the effort to become ordained to throw this like the guy was supposed to be there to pitch to the rock some video ideas that they could shoot real quick. They would like met before they were wicked friendly, but they pranked the reporter and he thought everything was going terribly. And then he walks into a surprise wedding that was then ministered by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That is amazing in so many ways. Oh, Did my guys, heart's melting. Did you ever see uh, his interview with Smosh where they just basically try and mess with him, but he, like, just goes along with it? I like, the the first question is just like, oh, man, whew. do you smell that? It, are you cooking something? <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, I'm always cooking something. Oh, what are you cooking? It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, when, awesome. I, when I saw The Rock at Comic-Con in like 2008 or something, he was promoting like Race to Witch Mountain or something. And during the <laughs> Q&A, he was, he was just so funny. And he was so honest too. They're just like, why are you doing Disney movies? And he's like, well, you know, I like working with kids. And then he'd like turn away and like pull his wallet out and be like, yeah, they, they pay me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a scene in one of the Fast and Furious movies where... Uh, the Rock's walking up, and uh, Tyrese Gibson, I think his name is, mm-hmm. uh, they're just like, oh shit, y'all, hide your baby oil. <laughs> and the, walk just, the Rock just improvs and goes, oh shit, you better hide that big-ass fucking forehead. <laughs> and Ludacris just burst out in laughter. Ludacris does like a spit take, because he had just taken a sip of something, yeah. and like just spits it everywhere. Yeah, That's like they used that actual scene for the movie, didn't they? I think mm-hmm. so. Oh, uh, it's so good. He, he's yeah, really... go see Spectre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not, not as God. good as The Rock. No, <laughs> yeah. but it's a good it's a good time, I guess. Scott Batista, he's yeah. a wrestler too. He's, his yeah, scenes are I, cool. No, I mean, I, I think it's not like um. So I feel like it kind of suffers from in the same sense that Dark Knight Rises, where they're really kind of forcing it like an ending. Yeah. But I like this movie. I hated Dark Knight Rises, so there's your indication. We're like, I'm probably gonna buy this movie. I'm gonna watch it again at, at home, you know. So that it was, it was good. And I like Sam Mendes as a director. I just felt like I just. I don't know. It just kind of felt like it was like a draft of a script and not the finalized script. It was yeah. like, oh, and Blofeld's the bad guy, and it just it felt so much more slight to me, like visually, like going from Skyfall, where <laughs> Roger Deakins is like my favorite cinematographer. Everything he shoots is like the prettiest goddamn shit in the world. Like, have you ever <laughs> seen the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford? Mm-hmm. No. You should. And just <laughs> that shit. Is pretty. <laughs> Jay, that was now. <laughs> but yeah, even though the cinematographer for this, is the guy who did Interstellar and stuff, so it was it was yeah. it was good. It just wasn't it wasn't Skyfall. Goddamn, the end of Skyfall. Yeah. That shit was good looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really good. Um, I am curious though as to know what is making y'all happy this week. What are y'all reading and watching and <laughs> listening to and. Um, <laughs> did any of you guys read that James Bond comic that came out? Uh, I wanted to, nope. but right now unemployment <laughs> is my fucking specter. <laughs> I saw it. I have it in my um, comicsology card. I didn't buy it because I was like, maybe I'll read this. But um, I did read Paper Girls number two, and that comic continues to be wonderful. Oh yeah, how could it not? It's just. It's everything I always want in comics and movies. Just like teenagers getting into trouble and solving mysteries, which isn't even really what's happening in this. But like, I always love movies like The Goonies and The Monster Squad and just Super 8 in that type of movie. Mm-hmm. And this is just that, but it's different because it's a bunch of girls with like field hockey sticks that are just ready to fuck shit up. And I'm like, I'm down. I'm in. Yep. Yep. And, and there's some weird shit happening in issue two. Like, uh, the sky opens and there's pterodactyls or something. Just weird, oh, shit. weird shit is happening, and I'm down. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, how about you? Oh, sorry. I was uh, gonna say, no, that's it. <laughs> well, well, is, well, is, is it my okay. turn? Um, I'm, <laughs> we, 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 you, me, you, me, you, me. <laughs> um, 
so I've been reading that much this week. Um, I have been uh, playing a lot of Metal Gear Solid Five, and I have learned that I am a pretty terrible spy, but as long as they give me infinite lives, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> um, and then kind of X-Filing, and now that I'm on vacation and I'm waiting for Fallout, I am just doing that, and I am checking Amazon maybe every five minutes, maybe every two to see <laughs> when when it's going to get here. Amazon's weird. I got a package on a Sunday morning once. Yeah, that is weird. I ordered like a keyboard and a mouse last week, and it was like expected Thursday. And then Sunday morning, my dad was like, hey, this package showed up. And I was like, what could this be? And it was that. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, who did delivered it, this? Did it come in a box that was about four sizes too big for the mouse and the keyboard? Oh, yeah. And I have a lot of bubble wrap. <laughs> nice. Bonus. <laughs> Which did you say that they have like bubble wrap that doesn't die for your keychain to as a stress reliever? They bubble wrap they actually give you like those big it's like they they have a little square um that like you can forever pop it. It it like doesn't die for some reason. That sounds but like they've discovered pop- Yeah, it makes the pop noise so you get the satisfaction of it. That sounds like they could power space shuttles with this technology. They just could like, end war. Yeah. Or at just... least the brains <laughs> of children everywhere. Uh, I, th- I mean, I, if I'm a child. I think you have a good idea, though. They should just freaking b- drop this shit over any war zone, and everybody's just going to be like, no, I'm good. Just I'm just going <laughs> to sit here and just pop this. Uh, all right. Uh, so <laughs> I've been watching One Punch Man because that's the best anime of the season easily. Like, just the most amusing, hilarious show out there. Um, and I just watched that Netflix original show with Aziz Ansari. Uh, I think it's master of nothing nothing or yeah. something like that. I watched the pilot yesterday or the first uh, episode, a marathon doll of it yesterday. <laughs> um, which it's funny cause in one of the episodes they just talk about how great Benedict Cumberbatch is <laughs> and, um, uh, Tim Heidecker that that's the bigger guy in Tim and Eric, right? Uh, yes. He's in it, and when they're watching the, like, Sherlock show, they he's just like, there are ten episodes, or not ten, but, like, three episodes deep, and he's just like, hey, have you guys, like, understood literally anything that they've been talking about this whole time? Because, <laughs> like, it, it doesn't sound like, right to me, but, boy, the visuals are really something, huh? <laughs> um, But, yeah, just anime... Uh, I'll get more specifics as to which shows next week because I'm lazy right now. Uh, besides One Punch Man and Awari Monogatari, um, and more Centaur's Life, <laughs> and I'm rewatching Food Wars because nice. that is food born. Is that also an anime? <laughs> It, it, it's literally like they take a bite of a steak or something like that, and all of a sudden the like juices flow and it, it turns into hentai, but they don't show any giblets. Huh? Did you ever watch <laughs> Yakitate Japan? You mean Yakitate Japan? That's what I. Well, Japan. I was doing Japan. <laughs> Japan. I was doing. I was doing it. I Everything just froze for me for a sec. <laughs> Good. Yeah, um, Yaki Tate Tate Japan. Japan. I don't know. That's how I always said it. Not Yaki not Tate like Japan. Japan. It's I like... want to go to Japan. <laughs> but I don't know. I that's love how to go to Japan <laughs> no, so and I watch think... anime. I think Japan when I'm talking about the country. But whenever I've talked about that show, I've always said Yakitate Japan. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have watched that. It was pretty cute. And it was funny that at one point uh, a character convinces another one that they get uh, girls get pregnant from being hugged. No, I that there's something I have like a vendetta against that fucking <laughs> series because there was like 48 volumes of the yeah. manga about bread. I <laughs> like, yep. was like, when you're when you're working in a shop and you need like shelf space. For like better series, <laughs> <You're just> 
fucking yaki tate japan get the fuck out i i mean i tried for years to like just liquidate that series because nobody bought it because it was a fucking series about baking bread i hate it i I would try and sell it to parents to give to their kids that that seems like the go-to because it is a very like kid-friendly manga whoever you could sell hikaru no go to i think would buy yaki tate japan you can sell Hikaru no Go to, like, anyone, can't you? No. I could That's sell true. that to anybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> good for you, Rob. I believe I'm, I'm Rob. just kidding. When I helped you guys at Kineticon this year, and people were like, do you have this? And I was like, I have literally zero idea what you just said or what it is, but maybe that tall guy over there knows. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I would just point to Jay and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. these Miyazaki art books are lovely, though, aren't they? <laughs> I think it's like when you, work in a, when you work in a comic book store, like, and maybe we could talk to other retailers about this, but I'm pretty positive that everybody has like that one series that they just want to get the fuck rid of. It has nothing to do with whether or not the story is good and everything to do with like how it just plagues them. <laughs> everybody has that. So, and Yaki Tacha Japan yeah. was like up there for me. Oh, God. I hated it. I always forget whatever series it is. Uh, I'm sorry, Yakitate Japan. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> uh, I always forget like what series it is until we're stocking shelves at Comicopia for Anime Boston. It's like Jesus yeah. Christ, it's this series again. <laughs> oh, God damn it. So, Angela, what are you reading and watching this week? Well, as you know, I haven't read shit. So <laughs> I am watching my love story. We're in the middle of like season two of Kimini Tadoke and Paul is like losing his shit because he's like, when are they going to hook up? <laughs> so that's how you know he's like into shoujo and you're like, oh, my God, just tell her you like her already. But um, yeah, and then we and I put on because it's on Netflix, uh, Seven Deadly Sins, which is a shonen that Super I good love it is so much fun and i saw the anime and i was like holy shit so i put on the first episode and paul who is only really familiar with shoujo anime so it's like girly love stories berserk i've watched that and berserk (laughs) saw seven deadly the first episode of seven deadly sins and it was like i have no idea what the fuck just happened (laughs) and i Uh, loved it that show is awesome i like the way i describe it always is that it's like Dragon Ball art style with Dungeons and Dragons like yeah. story and then Hunter Hunter fight scenes. I need to watch this show. And a cute like talking pig. Oh, Hawk Chan. I love Hawk. <laughs> yeah, when that pig came out, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. What is, that, what is going on? It, it you can't, you can't question it. So with the like manga too, they have the binder art. So it's like one image that's just going along. Until you're at the last series. So I've been, even though I've like watched all of it, um, I'm buying the manga so that I can have that on my shelf. It looks really cool. I remember the Dragon Ball Z VHS tapes did the same thing. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) I would always miss one though. That show was expensive. I'd have to go to Suncoast Video, (laughs) get like one VHS tape. This is back in the day. It would have two episodes on it. I'd be like, and then at the end of that episode, it would be like Goku just about to be Super Saiyan, and then you'd have to wait eight months for them to localize two episodes, and then you'd spend another 50 bucks on tape. What a, what a nightmare of a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd always just be, on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and then they'd show just Goku like, just <laughs> And that was uh, it. King Kai and his puns, just like, Goku, if you don't listen to me, then I'm going to tell you a really good joke. <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, this week, because uh, we're not getting any new comics, so I'm, I'm doing, as I mentioned last week, I'm diving into my into my stash. Um, so I started reading Justice, the Ross Cougar collaboration. Um, it's good. The, uh, the Al- Alex Ross does the entire comic, and the art's beautiful. Story, not so much. I was kind of hoping for a... Uh, Kingdom Come Earth X kind of a vibe, but it's still pretty good. Um, so it's definitely worth a read. So actually, if you're an Alex Ross fan, definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, that's all I got this week. But please make sure to check out all of our content on chronospeakeasy.com. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. You can find our stuff on 
Reddit. That you the kids tube. use these days. Oh yeah, and and, and the YouTubes. Yeah. Woo-hoo. And yeah, you should you should add us in all those things so we can mm-hmm. all be friends. Yep. <laughs> and make sure to check out uh, Will's podcast Tuesdays, which is all about Agents of Shield. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. We'll have a new a new episode coming out probably this week. Maybe Will. Uh yeah. We should probably record one after this week's episode and do a big catch up because I think we've missed a couple. Yeah, well, you know, life happens. Yeah. I mean, in all fairness, fuck the Simmons episode. I'll just say that right now. Spoiler yeah. alert. Is it? I've never. I've seen one episode of the show. I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's a terrible character, so don't worry about it. Yeah, she's dumb. Is, yeah. Simmons, is Simmons the hacker? Because that's the only character I can think no. of. No, no that that's Daisy. Guy. Daisy. Is that the one everybody loves? Yes. Okay. Sky was a hacker. Daisy's the superpower lady. <laughs> They're all the same person. Eh. All white girls look the same. In the meantime, <laughs> enjoy your issues. But hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Team Good Times. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bringing it back. <laughs>